Hi, welcome to this tutorial on the relationship between the gradients of two perpendicular lines. Now if I have a particular line, let's say we have this one here, and I draw a perpendicular line to it, that's one at right angles or 90 degrees, then if we look at the gradient, say, of each of these lines, let's just mark them in. We'll start by looking at the gradient of the red line. So to do that, what I can see is that for every one unit across here, I go two units up. So let's just write that in, that we'll put a one here and I rise two units. So the gradient of this red line is going to be the rise, two, divided by the one unit across in that direction. 2 divided by 1, which I know is 2, but I'm going to purposely leave it like this. Now let's have a look at the gradient of the perpendicular line. Now can you see that this one unit on the red part here, if I turn that 90 degrees, is going to go down here. Okay, that's going to be one unit. In fact, we're going to drop one unit. And this two units here on the red line, well, if we turn that 90 degrees, it's going to go along here. That would be two. So when it comes to the gradient of the blue line, OK, I've got one unit here. But what we're doing is dropping in the y direction minus one unit for every two units that we go in the x direction. So we get a gradient of minus a half. Can you see that what we have here seems to be that the fraction has been flipped over, turned upside down, and we've got a minus sign in place of the positive here. Let's try it on another one, one that isn't so clean if you like. For this one, let's have a look at the gradient of the red line. Here's a nice point. We can see that we drop three units for every two units that we go in that direction. So the gradient of the red line is that we're dropping three units, that's minus three, for every two units that we go across in the x direction. Now for the blue one, you can see that this 3 here, if we turn it 90 degrees, it's going to be 3 in that direction. And if we turn the 2 units 90 degrees, we rise up 2 units. So when it comes to the gradient of the blue line, we see that we rise 2 units for every 3 gained in the positive x direction. And again, you should notice that what we've got here is that the fraction has turned upside down and instead of having a minus sign, we switch the sign to a plus. So this is what actually happens when we're trying to find that relationship between one gradient of a line and the perpendicular gradient. So in other words, if I had a gradient of a line which was 5, what would be the perpendicular gradient? Well, we can think of this as 5 over 1, so we switch the fraction upside down and get 1 fifth. But remember to switch the sign, so we get minus a fifth. If I had a line with a gradient of minus 3 quarters, what would be the perpendicular gradient? Switch the sign, be a plus, turn the fraction upside down, so you get 4 thirds. And I'd leave it at 4 thirds, I wouldn't write it as 1 and a third. So in general, if I've got a gradient of A over B, the perpendicular gradient would be minus B over A. Or if I had a line with a gradient of M1 and the perpendicular gradient was M2, what do I notice about the connection between these gradients? Well, if I multiply them together, 2 over 1 times minus a half, I get minus 1, and the same applies here. Minus 3 over 2 times 2 thirds comes out to be minus 1. So the product of any two perpendicular gradients will always be minus 1. And this is a formula that you'll often see in 
formula books and in textbooks. So I'd encourage you to learn this. But I never really use this that much. I just simply just say, well, I've got one gradient. The perpendicular gradient will be the negative reciprocal, as we say. We switch the fraction upside down and change the sign. OK, well, I hope that's given you an idea then of perpendicular gradients. And we'll use that later on in questions where we have to find the equation of perpendicular lines.